and we're recording all right let's do this thing all right this will be fun what's up everyone hello hey so we're gonna talk multiverse of madness calling this the multiverse of podcast not everyone has a podcast but maybe we should call it the multiverse of arkansas no. Multiverse of Ar- Arkansas film critics, or something, something like that. Yeah, um, I like thinking about alternate Arkansas's. Alt Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> what other Arkansas's are out there? <laughs> so um, cool. Well, thanks again uh, for everyone for joining. Uh, we may have more join. Um, the way this setup is, I'll be able to see, and I'll just add them in. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna talk Doctor Strange. Um, pretty much everyone involved is a fan of films in general um either through writing a blog or a podcast or a youtube channel so i thought this would be fun for just all of us to get together collab and uh talk about multiverse of madness because uh this was one of my anticipated films of the year um but before we get on with anything i thought we could start off by just uh sharing like you know who you are um either what's your, what's your primary channel you share to and maybe give like a sentence or two of your initial thoughts on Multiverse of Madness. And we'll just keep, get this going because we actually have more people joining right now. <laughs> so we'll just kind of <laughs> go with things. We got, oh, still got more joining. Let's do this. Oh. <laughs> or we can wait for just a second we have like two two for, people yeah, yeah we just had two uh two people quick. just join <laughs> so we can edit around this or we can keep it raw i don't know i like keeping <laughs> video raw so i'll probably leave this in for my channel should uh i guess i can go first it's where you're welcome to go first folks to hop in here yeah my name's andrew sweatman i do a podcast and a blog called art house garage um in general, I was a fan of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You know, is it? I always it's in the Multiverse of Madness, right? Not and the, yeah. the in and the and is throwing me off. Um, yeah. I have some issues with it, but I had a really great time watching it. And um, I'd say it's like middle to a little higher than middle as far as MCU films goes for me. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm Sax Whitehead. I run a blog called Dr. Popcorn. Um, So I share reviews on there, written reviews. Um, And I liked Dr. Strange, the Multiverse of Madness quite a bit. Um, It's definitely one of my, um, I don't know if I'd say it's one of my favorites necessarily, but I would say it's definitely one of the most excited I have been by an MCU movie in quite some time. It's just because it's just so interesting. I think there's just some interesting things at play with um, how um, Sam Raimi, you know, puts his little touch on the MCU. But I'm kind of with Andrew on this one. This is probably about more middle of the pack for me, maybe kind of a little higher up, but I generally liked it quite a bit. Awesome. Take it your turn, Luke. Oh, uh, you sure you want me to go? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? Uh, my name is Luke Urban. <clears throat> I um, kind of collab jam on various things. Uh, I'm one of the agents on the Agents of Mace podcast. Um, I do have a YouTube channel um, called Take Five, uh, where that's where I do my movie reviews. And I've recently joined the uh, 241 Joe live show every Monday morning. Uh, with Donovan and Joel and Multiverse okay. of Madness. <laughs> this is the part where I need to run away. I did not like it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, uh, I had, your review. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of issues with this one. Um, a lot of issues. And, and, you know, some of it is more or less my fault. Uh, I did catch uh, spoilers before seeing it on a couple of platforms. Um, and just generally had a bad theater experience but um you know i i had a lot of issues with this film and we can talk about them i do want to see it again i feel like if i can see it again and be able to really focus (laughs) versus getting distracted by too many people talking um i can probably uh maybe you know get more thoughts around it but um 
yeah from what, I, what i've seen some other people say like i'm the polar opposite in terms of like which acts i liked and didn't like and, and reasons why but um yeah unfortunately this is kind of near the bottom in terms of my overall ranking potentially could go up after i watch it again usually once i watch these films more than once my rankings do tend to change over time but um yeah i had a lot of issues with this one okay I will hurry and go next because I'm also on Agents of Mace. Hi, I'm Alicia Ginswater. <laughs> uh, I'm a co-host, as I said, on Agents of Mace. I do not have other things to promote or appear on, so that list is very limited. Um, as far as the film goes, I thought it was great. Um, I thought that it was good as a Sam Raimi movie. I thought that the emotional stakes are really high. I love the performances. It was a hot mess. I recognize that, but I enjoyed watching that hot mess every <laughs> second of it. So big thumbs up for me. All right. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Keith and Johnny. Uh, essentially what we're doing is just give a quick intro of who you are and promote you know, what you work on and uh, give us uh, your initial thoughts on Multiverse of Madness. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Can I'm a novice you. at this. Yeah. I can hear you just fine. All right. Um, well, yeah, my name is Keith Garlington. I am a film critic with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette and uh, also for my website, Keith in the Movies. Um, been doing the website for about 12, 13 years, something like that. And I've been with the Democrat Gazette for about a year now um, doing film reviews for them. Um, as far as the movie, um, I am in the group that went in with so-so expectations, mainly because of Ramey, and left on this kitty high um, <laughs> because of the absolute craziness that I saw on screen. Now, to give it a little context, I am one of those that was extremely into um, the MCU up into Endgame, somewhere around that area. This last phase, I've really had a hard time staying attached. And um, what I wanted from this was just something to kind of kick it in the pants, something to just sort of stir things up. Just to, I wanted Raimi to go bonkers, and he does. And um, I like what was said. It's a little crazy. It's a little nuts. It's a little, um, it's a little messy. I mean, messy just seems like the perfect word for it. But at the same time, I sat there with a dumb smile on my face <laughs> through this whole thing. I mean, I was laughing. Um, I was uh, just sort of shocked that M the MCU gave him that much leeway to do some of the things he did. Um, and uh, my daughter went with me, a diehard Wanda fan. And I know, and what's funny is I know she's, her storyline is one of the things that's um, got a lot of people talking. Um, she loved it. She was sad um, by certain elements of it, which I think we, sh we should be, but um, she loved it. So watching her love it made me love it. Um, so I loved it. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Johnny. Hey, how you guys doing? I am Johnny Brannon. I am a local actor and filmmaker. Um, I'm also uh, also co-run the Made in Arkansas, um, everything Made in Arkansas, Made in Arkansas Film Festival, and the uh, Made in Arkansas, I guess, Facebook page. Um, oh, let's see here. Goodness. Uh, so, so I went with Donovan and a crew last Thursday, I guess, or might have been Friday, might have been Thursday. I can't remember. I don't know if, Don if Donovan's on or not, but... Um, so we all went and saw it, and um, yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Marvel films, but I'm not like, you know, like, you know, big, big, big fan, but I uh, wasn't sure what to expect. I was really curious to, to see if these uh, spoilers that's leaked were going to be as they were, and I actually am one who can handle spoilers, <laughs> and sometimes I'll peek at them, and I can enjoy the film just as much watching it the first time knowing that there's spoilers uh, even if as if i would you know didn't know the spoilers so either or and um i can be very very entertained and uh you know uh, you know like luke's uh, experience i had we had talkers next to us <laughs> <laughs> and no joke anytime i go to a film with donovan there's always somebody talking and uh 
and I have to deal with it. But this time we actually shushed these kids and they, they, they felt it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, I just got through working on a film, uh, last week. So I immediately, you know, met up with Donovan. So I was still kind of trying to recuperate and actually, I dozed off a couple of times in the theater. And uh, so there's a couple of moments in there and I was, I was you know, kind of you know, waking up and going, oh, wow, this looks pretty cool. <clears throat> so um, so I'm definitely going to have to see it again. But I did enjoy what I did see. And I'm, you know, I can't you know, be articulate about how, you know, you know, how much I enjoyed the film or how much I didn't enjoy the film. It's very neutral because of the talkers and I would love to see it without anybody kind of running it. There was one guy in the theater that I think he jumped up whenever, you know, are, we, are you doing spoilers yet or is it okay? Or we should can, I not say this is a multiverse of craziness. Okay. <laughs> so we can, we can go in any form we want here. Okay. When the Illuminati popped up and the one guy that we all know <laughs> that everybody was, has been thinking that was going to be, you know, who, one guy in the theater jumped up and he's like, yeah, you know? And so <laughs> that was it. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I can't give you an honest. Talking about Tom Cruise, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Internet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. No, nah, but no, nah, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to see it again to give a probably a better opinion of it. But I, and yeah. I do want to see it again. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, like that was that was the big moment for for me in my theory experience. And you know, of course, that's the moment that got spoiled. Um, and you know, I. I got to blame myself because I kind of, when I saw that trending on Twitter, his name, I knew exactly what it was and still clicked on it. <laughs> so I managed uh, to stay spoiler free on that. And I was, I was surprised that I, I don't like holler at movies, but when that happened, I went, Oh snap. Like I was, I was really excited. <laughs> I was surprised at myself at just how vocal I was when that moment popped up. Yeah. Um, yeah, my wife went into full applause, full <laughs> applause, and we were all like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was so excited to see John Krasinski as Reed Richards and to see uh, Haley Atwell getting to play a live action Captain yeah. Carter. I was yeah. oh, yes. by the time by the time Professor X comes around, I was like, okay, yeah, that might as well happen at this point as well. <laughs> I know there are so many moments I was like. Please bring in Magneto. Please bring in Magneto. I just wanted more of that, especially because, you know, this is where I'm curious on everyone's kind of thoughts. I mean, this isn't, I wouldn't put this as Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is really a Wanda Scarlet Witch movie to me. Um, Because, yeah, that was the whole like kind of shift is like when you think about it, I mean, and this was kind of like the misleading thing um, where, to me, the madness was essentially she's just really mad and she's pushing her way through the multiverse because she wants to get her kids back. Um, that's kind of my viewpoint on the madness aspect of it. Yeah, that's one. Of, so, again, I, I mostly really like this. I think as far as the script goes, it's it is messy. And there's a lot of there's a lot of moments where we're having to explain the kind of exposition hopping in. There's a lot of. Mm -hmm. How, how convenient how convenient that in this universe christine is a multiverse expert how how perfect for this story to make things go smoothly so there's a lot of those things where it's like this is a little clunky like the mechanics of it are not perfect um it, you know talking about multiverse movies also in theaters right now everything everywhere all at once people are comparing those i don't think we necessarily have to compare them but i do think in that movie like the script is just top notch and like yeah. everything works together organically. I know not everyone here is a huge fan of that. Looking at you, Keith, but um, the, uh, <laughs> the, yeah. So the script on this was a little clunky, but yeah. I, I, I liked a lot of the ways that it surprised us. Like not only the Illuminati characters, but then the fact that they die really horrible, violent deaths within about 10 mm -hmm. minutes of meeting them. I thought that was, I was surprised by that as well. And I thought that was just really cool. I was like, well, we're going to yeah. watch them all get murdered violently. Definitely. Like, I would probably what put that in the see so where i'm reversed from i think most people is i just like the second act i didn't really care for the first and third and i've seen that the reverse for a lot where they didn't like the second act but they love the first and third because <laughs> uh when you say like yeah that's where especially the third act i thought the script that's where the script got extremely messy um for me and then this is me and this this is just probably just how my brain works is because like the biggest thing that I was curious on and really this is like what we've talked about on the agents of May so much is how is this going to play with the Disney 
plus series specifically wandavision and i felt like that is where the biggest letdown was i think this movie could have been a little bit longer to really tie it into that series in a better way especially for those that have never seen that series because uh it was hard for me to like br- get my brain to break away from that because i was just kind of going through as i'm watching this of like are people really going to follow this know what's going on or is it just, they just going to be scratching their heads with the entire film yeah, yeah. And I think this is one of those just corners that the MCU has sort of backed themselves into, um, mm-hmm. where pretty much everything is projecting forward. Yeah, um, There's really not a lot of room for a movie just to be kind of original and do this only because, you know, and, and a lot of it is Marvel Studios. They've gotten fans already looking forward. Like during this one, it's all right, what's next? What's next? What's next? Mm-hmm. And there's it's just kind of become this and I don't really know how they could avoid it because it is just this thing building on top of it and then building another layer and another layer. And so um, I get what you're saying. Um, I just think it's probably just the way it's going to be the rest of the way. Um, I don't know. And that may be one of the reasons I'm kind of not as attached to it because, yeah. you know, you do sort of see these, it's just sort of this, this chain of mm-hmm. this connects to this, then it connects to this. Because I, I honestly, I don't think, I know I've heard some people say, yeah, you could go in um, cold and you would, you know, you might miss a few things, but I honestly don't think how, I, I honestly don't understand how anyone could go in cold and really have a good grasp, especially emotionally mm-hmm. for this thing. This mm-hmm. thing is built so much on that last little clip of WandaVision, um, you know, that, that little stinger and, on what has taken place at the end of um, No Way Home. I mean, mm-hmm. those things are just essential. And it's, uh, for me, and I, I do want to say this too about the exposition. I think Andrew's exactly right. I mean, it, it is heavy. But if there was ever a movie where, and I criticize a lot of exp- over exposition a lot, but if there was ever a movie where it seemed to fit, I felt that in this one, it, it kind of did because, um, they were essentially as clueless as we were about a lot of these things. So they have a lot of these questions like, what on earth is this? Can you tell me, explain this to me? And again, it may be a little cop out, but, um, uh, but, and I am with Andrew also on the convenience thing. There's a lot of conveniences in this movie that just sort of makes the plot go the direction it needs. It's almost like they're sort of nudging the plot in this direction or that direction. But I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It just, those things really didn't bother me in the grand scheme of things. I mean, I just, uh, maybe it was just because I was too sort of wound up in all the sort of the craziness that, that, that Raimi was doing. I mean, you know, Luke, you mentioned the madness to me, the madness is Sam Raimi. It's not really Wanda doing this or, or uh, strange doing that. It's just this goofy stuff that he, that he actually had the guts to do. And, you know, to um, Marvel studios credit, they let him. And they let him do a lot of those things. So, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. And, and so, yeah, all those things, it did feel like it's pushing us to this end. And the ending was kind of worth it. Like, it really was big and crazy. And we had Zombie Strange and we had this music note fight, which I was like, what in the world is going on? This is, I love it. I don't understand what's happening, but I love it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I did. I thought the, and I think a lot of Marvel movies, the third act kind of, is not always the best like that sometimes mm-hmm. it's a letdown and this one i thought was really great and yeah. I, was, I was like they they built it up to something really good in this but yeah i think it's interesting like mcu is like kind of like a tv show now because it's always all these yeah. episodes within this thing mm-hmm. and it starts to fall into some of the same pitfalls that tv like tv shows that are on for a long time where like we're having to push forward and it doesn't always make sense plot wise but we have to keep going and then also like characters become caricatures of themselves almost and it's it's like in doctor strange one we had all this great character development where he's like less of a smart aleck and he's like a better person but then we see in avengers endgame and all these uh, one in the middle where he has to like do the doctor strange thing and kind of be a little smart ass and like that's Mm. that's it feels like he reverted a little bit but in this one i did like the you know are you happy and that kind of came up again and again as as a little bit of character development for him but yeah what, what you're saying about wandavision i think it really kind of undercuts wandavision and um i think yeah i think what you're saying luke is right that they could have connected that better mm-hmm. for one thing she's obsessed with her kids but 
she doesn't care about vision anymore like what's the they yeah. didn't even mention and like i think they could have somehow tied that in and said like i guess the book has made her go evil and and they should have maybe explained that or shown that a little bit more right um in some way because it, it presumably visions out there in some of these universes too um, you know, it's funny about that i asked my wife about that and she said honey i love you but it's my kids first <laughs> i'm going after our kids so i just sort of wait yes ma'am i understand <laughs> interesting i understand yeah. Maybe that's, you know, something women yeah. viewers connected to better. And I think that's interesting. Yeah. But I did like the, just like the, that she was propelled to, to go like full. It was just kind of fun to watch her going like full witch and like mm -hmm. being in her, you know, righteous anger mm -hmm. and all of that, even though she takes things too far, all that. But uh, I thought that was, that was fun. A fun aspect of it. Maybe she's not going after vision because technically there is still a vision popping around in the universe. And she's like, True. Yeah. I'll catch up with him later. I've got to find <laughs> the babies first. Yeah. That kind of drags. Yeah. I was going to say, they could have done something where she, it's like she would be ashamed of who she's become or something. like. And I think that could have been a good character moment for her. Uh, but they, yeah, yeah, they kind of skirted over it in a way that, but yeah, but yeah, that's a good point that there is still some version of vision out mm -hmm. here in our universe too. I would have been totally okay if they could have opened this with the last like moments of WandaVision when the kids are crying out for her, because then right away you could get that emotional punch and you're like, okay, I, I get the reasoning why she's doing this. Like, but yeah. Yeah. They do depend on you to connect a few dots. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and maybe a little too much. But, yeah. Uh, her powers, the whole big, first battle scene with the sorcerers mm -hmm. was incredible it was like her mind control like i'm a big fan of ultron age of ultron and just seeing these moments of like getting back into that element i want more of that that was so awesome yeah this one let her go i mean this one actually yeah. released her and we'd gotten um i'd mentioned this in my review of the movie that how we had gotten little tastes of her power before a little bit in wandavision that great line she gives in Endgame, mm -hmm. where where Thanos sort of arrogantly says, "I don't even know you," and she kind of gives him the little, "You would, you will," and mm -hmm. you know she has him. If he doesn't just rain down the hellfire or whatever he calls, basically his last opportunity, you know, she had him there. Mm -hmm. But this really lets her loose and kind of shows just how powerful she is, and I really appreciated that. I had, I like that quite a bit. Oh yeah. It was exciting to get to see that finally. Like, um, my husband is not exactly the same level of Marvel fan that I am, but he goes with me to see everything. And it, one of his biggest beefs is he says, once Wanda or uh, Captain Marvel show up, it should all be over because they've got <laughs> such ridiculous, strong powers. They should be able to end anybody who's even around them. Um, and we finally got to see that Wanda did kind of take out like a whole monastery of people by herself. I mean, granted, it was she's evil now and all that, but still, we got to see it. Oh yeah. Well, let's um, let's kind of go back into the multiverse aspect and talk about our brand new character. We want to share uh, initial thoughts on uh, America and her capabilities and you know how they crafted her story um well i i was pretty lukewarm on her i thought the performance was solid um but the whole time to me she felt like um she felt like sort of a plot device you know she was there had a very distinct purpose to be there and that was to give wanda someone to hunt and to give strange someone to protect um she had this power that was i mean was, i mean i guess multiverse hopping mm -hmm. i guess that will come in handy at some point <laughs> but i i just I, I i didn't think she was really given a whole lot of depth and maybe that's yeah. because they are setting her up also for her tv show um down the line so i, I don't i just sort of felt that um she was a nice new character but she really wasn't given a whole lot to do other than, you know, be chased by Wanda and protected by strange. And, you know, she did come into her own a little bit at the end, but again, I think most of her was, it was really kind of setting her up for her own show. 
Yeah. Um, I was really hoping they'd do a little more with her, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Popcorn, we haven't heard from you. Um, I'm kind of with Keith um, for the most part. Um, I think that um, the performance is great. I really like um, what I saw from her. I do think that she isn't given that much to do, but I kind of was okay with it just because, I mean, we're just being introduced to her. I feel like this is a character we're going to see much more of, obviously, in the TV show and probably in other films. So I was fine with that. Um, but I, I think she's an interesting character. I think it's at least enough to kind of get people interested in, um, mm -hmm. you know, who this character is, finding out more about her in the future and all that. And so I think if that was the goal, they definitely achieved that, at least with me. Um, but I, I'm definitely really curious to see where we go with this, uh, this new character. Yeah, I agree too. I thought that, I mean, I, I've never heard of her before. You know, I, I'm, I don't follow comics and, uh, well, not like I used to, um, but, you know, seeing what she was able to do, I was like, that's a pretty powerful power if you have it. Mm -hmm. And for her to kind of pop in there and, you know, you knew that she could probably do some damage with it if she knew, I guess, how to use it or, or what, but they, they kind of, you know, left a lot of that out. But I, I agree, you know, it's, I'm curious to see what they're going to do on the TV show if they, or whatever, whatever's going to happen there. Um, I'll definitely watch it, but, um, but nah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah, kind of seeing like they could probably utilize her in Quantum Mania, maybe, or you know, with if you look, if you mm -hmm. especially if you follow a lot of the series, I'm kind of leaning towards um, Young Avengers. Like they'll have her, you know, bring them all together and form the Young Avengers to fight someone. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like one, like one character I'm really wanting to get into the actual films is uh, the Watcher, um, but you know, it seems like the Watcher and then America kind of have that same ability where they can just go between all of these different uh, universes. So, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with with where I could see this character coming in next. Maybe the biggest issue with with America is that we don't like. We don't get a firm enough grasp of her personality just yet. I mean, this is like you guys said, just an introduction. And the only reason why that becomes uh, somewhat of an issue for the film is that Doctor Strange gets like almost immediately attached to her and starts protecting her, helping her, that kind of thing. And of course it's partly because she's a kid, she's mm -hmm. in trouble, she needs his help. But as the audience, it would be better, I think if we, had that same kind of emotional connection with her, which again is, they had a lot to cover here. The mm -hmm. young actress does a great job. It's just maybe something that could have been fleshed out a little bit more in the script. It was one of the only things that I noticed that were kind of a negative for me watching this was just, I wanted to know more about America, like just as a character. Yeah, they could definitely, put her into a film or a series because you know a lot of her core a lot of her story or struggle is separation from parents so i could definitely see them doing a story where she's going to multiverse hop to find her family and um a bunch of crazy stuff could happen <laughs> within that um yeah cool um let's get into a little bit of spoiler stuff what is what's everyone's thoughts on the illuminati and uh just the various characters within the illuminati Um, well, I, th I thought it was an interesting selection. Um, yeah. uh, I, I love seeing Black Bolt. I mean, is <laughs> I mean, I thought that was really cool. Uh, I thought he was he was just really it was really cool to see him. And of course, he's you know a part of the comic Illuminati. So I was wondering if was he going to be mm -hmm. uh, was he going to be there? And I'm sure he, he was. And I thought it was interesting who uh, uh, you know who all else was there, but. Um, and of course, Stuart, 
I mean, I guess it may be more of a sentimental thing, but I, I yeah. love seeing Patrick Stewart. Um, oh, yeah. He, he just, gosh, the guy just has this natural charisma. Uh, I could just sit there and listen to him read the phone book. I mean, I it just, he, when he came on, I mean, it, that was probably the loudest, even though we knew that had been the lid, the trailer blew the lid off that one. And he was on the yeah. red carpet and all that. Still the loudest anyone got in the um, uh, screening I was at was when he came out, you know, they show his hand on the side of the chair. He kind of comes out and then he turns around the camera comes out and there he is. Um, but uh, no, I thought, I thought the Illuminati, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, no Tom Cruise, but you know. So yeah, I was going to say real quick to add into this question <laughs> um, with all the various rumor mills and I guess from all of that, is there any one particular actor character you would have loved to seen in this? Me, I, I mean, I was fine with it because again, <laughs> it's one of those deals by that point you're in, yeah, they've yeah. done pulled you into another universe so kind of anything goes mm. you know who knows who their illuminati is so they can kind of manufacture whatever you know backstory there is to sort of bring all of these together so i was you know i was i was fine with it it was i thought it was fun especially when they go down the line and of course mm. end with krasinski i mean uh and my wife's applause um <laughs> yeah it was fun we had a, I, I thought they did a good job with them and of course then is the short time they were with us uh but yeah i, I think they did a good job with that and it, and it fits that they would take him to the illuminati i thought they did a real good job of sort of explaining why they deemed him to be such a threat uh, because you know our strange yes we know you but look we know our strange it's our strange that has done a lot of bad things and i just i kind of loved all of that um yeah. kind of back and forth they had with him as he was trying to convince them and uh, and they were saying no wait we we get you, but, you know, and, and it kind of makes you want to know more about that history, to be honest, because, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe that's the point, maybe they want to get us more curious about these different um, dimensions that who knows if we'll be in them again sometimes. Yeah, it was interesting, uh, like, anytime they they keep hinting so like disney owns fox now so are we gonna get the x-men are we gonna get fantastic mm -hmm. four and they, they like in wandavision there's the um uh the actor who i can't remember who plays the pietro yes yes pietro mm -hmm. uh in in the x-men series so there's like this fun hint but it's like oh it's not really a connection because this is all in wanda's head and or whatever and then same thing here it's like oh it's another universe and he's dead now and so we're still not really getting the x-men so they keep you know opening this up and shutting it back down so it's interesting to see what what they'll end up doing if they end up doing more with it but but yeah i really liked that whole sandwich so yeah captain carter was incredible mm -hmm. um, she was the one i was like i was like they're gonna kill all of them and she was the one i was like no please don't because <laughs> you get like chopped in half my goodness but um yeah i thought that that whole scene was really great and you know i've seen you know the the rumors that hoping that emily blunt could be um yeah. in yeah. fantastic four as well whenever yeah. that because uh, assuming that john krasinski is now part of this and he's going to be in it down the road uh that's pretty exciting and we should talk a little bit about their deaths because it's like Raimi probably sat at a table with guys and said all right let's come up with the craziest <laughs> most you know just I won't, I won't say the word but bat crazy yeah. ways we can kill them so I mean we've got you know we'll make Reed Richards will like shred him like cheese mm. um and you know we'll cut Peggy in half and um oh I gotta go let's make um, Black Bolt's brain literally explode inside that of his skull. Was, that was like the most brutal moment up to that. That was pretty brutal. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Gosh. Which I wonder if the, the Captain Carter was potentially a nod to uh, What If um, from the zombie episode when uh, he gets cut in half. Yeah, but probably so. Probably so. Yeah, I didn't think about I have that. I've not watched What If. I knew she was in it, but I didn't know. Uh, I didn't that think about that. There. She is in a few episodes, but um, there, there's a different episode um, with Steve, and that's how. Yikes! He wow. dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. it was pretty pretty cool. The uh, Illuminati seems great, but the um, and, I, and like you guys, I, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe some X Men is going to pop up, or something like, or even just anywhere, you know, like some door is going to open up and. We're gonna see Cyclops or something, um, but it kind of, that whole death scene reminded me of that show on Amazon, Invincible. I don't know if you guys have watched that or not. And once it was happening, I was like, "Oh, yeah, you know." Now we get to see some heroes 
die in a brutal way. And you know, that was pretty cool. Um, and it just, you know, it's like, you know, with what Raimi does, you know, and just kind of taking it to that next level of like, hey, let's let's start a pod a little bit and let's see what happens. And I don't know, I might see more of this down the road, but more maybe more rated R, you know, Marvel films, but I don't know. I guess that's really the only way you're going to get away with, you know, brutal murders of a superhero, but that's so you're, you know, doing another. Well, he got away films. with quite a bit there. He did. He did. <laughs> he did and, didn't he? Um, and, and, you know, of course, he's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of jumping away from this a little bit, but the whole evil, there's so much evil dead, mm. you know, yeah. references back and forth. And I, 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 mean, I love the evil dead, but it's like, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Oh, here's Donovan. Donovan's coming in. Yeah, I love evil dead. <laughs> And as far as casting goes, let me just say the one thing they could do to sell me on this phase, regardless of what they do, is if they could bring Fassbender back as Magneto. Yeah, um, I love that. Wait a minute, no, no, no frowns. I loved Fassbender <laughs> as Magneto. Yeah. I mean, he would to me was my favorite casting from those X Men movies. I thought him and McAvoy were really good. The rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you there, Donovan? Welcome to the multiverse. <laughs> He's speechless. He's in another dimension. He's, right? just, yeah. <laughs> He's thinking. He's thinking, do I want to enter this dimension? Or maybe <laughs> there's just audio difficulty. issues. I was going to say, too, while we're waiting on Donovan to figure out his audio issues, the, um, yeah, just the Sam Raiminess of it I thought was really great. Yeah, so the, the, whatever demon sort of things we see at the end is fun but even just like when we first see the city at the beginning uh in the kaiju fight thing with the squid or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, i was like something about the way the city is shot reminds me of spider-man like it just felt i was like am i in spider-man yeah. 2 right now mm -hmm. i was like that's really cool and, and like we see the cars flying across the like from the intersection right. and all of that yeah. uh, so i thought that was a, a kind of a cool thing i thought i loved the ending like the final moment not the credit scenes but like the end of the film i thought it was a perfect like Raimi horror ending kind of surprise little moment uh, but yeah i don't all the all the crazy stuff. so that's that's another question this brings up is so he says something about the souls of the damned and um then he like makes them into a cloak and all that and then she says go back to hell in that moment so is this confirming that there is a hell in in the mcu and also does every universe have its own hell or is hell its own universe i'm these are the questions that i'm wondering about at this point well i i feel like probably yeah especially after what kind of moon knight has given us Ooh, and... i haven't finished moon knight so feel free to spoil i don't care it's fine but <laughs> well where are you at in moon knight uh episode one, <laughs> Half of episode one. Okay, okay. i'm working on it i'm working on it close you're almost there okay <laughs> um watch moon knight Right. I really enjoy it, and and question. you're gonna you're gonna get to some really cool moments that are really gonna answer that question. Interesting. Yeah. Donovan, do we have you? Do you have audio? You you, you have me. I'm yes. Here. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Let's give us a quick intro. And uh, quick just, intro. Just go ahead. Uh, yeah, give us an intro, man. Who, are you, who you what are, you which platform is. Welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. I'm your host, <laughs> Donovan. Oh, different podcast. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm Donovan Thompson, host, Podcast 2 for 1, Daniel Wingfield. I want to hop on here and see all my friendly faces. I see Andrew, Luke. I see Johnny, motherfucking Brandon. And I see Elisa out here, too. I don't know Keith, though. Keith, I don't I don't know you. So we yeah, can connect know. sometime. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to yeah. meet you. Nice to meet you and also, I see, I see sax on there as well. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Um, me and Daniel's review dropped earlier this morning. Um, like I, like, like we said, we've been talking about this movie since day one, and um, the the hype and the expectations were out of this out of this world. And I think we kind of got a little Ralph Bonard again. Um, and I, what I mean by that is, you know, our expectations are so high for WandaVision for all the potential cameos and all the rumors that were happening, and week by week we were just foaming at the mouth. And I haven't felt that kind of like that water cooler talk in so long. And uh, then we got Ralph Boner and, uh, you know, uh, I, we kind of expectations got crumbled pretty quickly. <laughs> and I feel like going into this with the reviews and everything else that I, I kind of felt like, OK, my expectations have been a little tampered. I enjoyed the movie. I had a great time with it. Um, it's got a lot of narrative flaws, in my opinion. And, um, you know, it was fun. Sam Raimi, one of my favorite directors of all time. It, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work in this movie. Um, 
but I'm here for it. Again, there are some things that I'm not sure how spoiler we were, we're getting with the movie. There are some things out, that I spoil Any, out. Where's Tom Cruise, Iron Man? Where, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> Thank you. Where's where, he at? Where was, where was Wesley oh. Snipes' Black Panther? Oh, man. I know. I know. Anyway, I was so happy we got Krasinski as Mr. Yes. Fantastic. And then having Black Bolt from the Inhumans TV show, that was like the biggest surprise for me. Big Black Bolt fan. And also I'm watching Star Trek Stranger Stranger or Stranger World, Stranger Worlds, something like that. Stranger I'm watching that. He's 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 a pike on it. So um very happy with those those additions, but they were a little too short for me. Again, I need my Eric Banna Hulk. I needed Edward Norton Hulk. I needed all the secret worst things we're getting we're gonna get eventually. But anyway, yeah. that's my really quick rant on the movie. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being able to join. Yeah, of course. So yeah, uh, we were essentially just basically talking about our favorite Illuminati moments, uh, oh, favorite, yeah. um, you know, Raimi moments. Um, um, yeah, I, I mean, no, I'm, I'm not a huge comic reader, so I don't really know. But like the the music note fight thing again, mm-hmm. I thought it was so cool. So I love that That's they didn't the explain part. it. Did that? Is that from a comic? Is there some precedents for that, or is it just completely out of left field? I don't know. Not that I know of, no, not um, mm. from any particular comic, but that's one thing me and Daniel also talked about was the cool thing about Doctor Strange that separates him from all the other villains or all the other heroes is the fact that you can have these bombastic like him versus Thanos fight in Infinity War, which is probably the coolest part of that movie. Mm-hmm. Like that fight, you can just do all these weird, crazy, multi-dimensional, different this shit that doesn't even make fucking sense. Sorry, I'm not sure this you, you can cuss on your pod, Luke. <laughs> Gotta I'm, edit I'm bringing all, all of this of, now. Oh, <laughs> good. No, oh, sorry. Just all bleep, good. Just all bleeps. All good. Um, but you know, like that's what Doctor Strange can do. He can do all this stuff, and you don't have to explain it. Some no. things you need to explain, right. like his arc, which is missing. But mm. I, I do think, like stuff like that. Who cares? It's super cool. Danny Elfman come in and killed it. And I was very happy with with that collaboration coming back since Spider Man Two, actually. So yeah, yeah. There's a few I was gonna mention the music, a few like electric guitar cues at different moments. I was like, this oh, yeah. is so cool. I love those oh, yeah. those little moments in the score. Yeah. So Drew can't be here, but I'm gonna leave a note. So Drew, once you watch this, we got to do a fact check because he'll know the exact comment <laughs> if this was referenced. Oh, nice. The music thought felt to me like Rami saying, "Okay, Danny Elfman's gonna tear this up." Like that was the whole concept. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so often the MCU s- soundtracks are not like the best in the world. Uh, not always very memorable, but I thought this one was really a standout. Yeah, they're they're really not. We've only had a few standouts. We've had Alan Silvestri come in with like uh, the winter or like first Avenger theme. He's done Avengers one. He did Avengers uh, three and four. Danny Elfman actually did Age of Ultron, which I wasn't a huge fan of that score actually, um, but. You know, we've had a few good ones, Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah, they really like haven't well, really like. stood out. I think Michael Giacchino did Doctor Strange one, which I actually do enjoy that score. But, um, but yeah, no, I think you're right. I think they don't have super memorable stuff, but this one's pretty good, and I think I was pretty impressed with it. Hmm. So maybe we can talk about the kind of the ending of the film a little bit. Maybe our first uh, or our mid credit scene. Uh, just thoughts on kind of what happened there and where you know what's going on with strange at this point and where do you think this could be going uh especially with like we got another new actress joining the mcu world um which is uh she's playing clea mm-hmm. i got lots of thoughts well let's go, go first though <laughs> oh you guys go first i i have i liked that I, I didn't know who it was when she popped up i was like oh i, I thought it might be nova because i know that's someone that's coming apparently but i and it's not her um so i have a lot to learn about clea but i was like oh cool charlie's there on his here i did wonder so I, again i love the 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 before those credits like the final moment where strange's eye pops open and just this blood curling scream to end the movie I, I loved that um but i am curious this he seems like at peace with it when we see him in the mid credit scene do we think he's gonna have to fight some internal demons and you know because it's like oh is he gonna go bad it was kind of what i was thinking but it seemed like he was fine what what do you all speculate about that do we think that's going to be an issue or is that just something that he has now yeah i was i was a little curious too if it was like you know like a side effect of um you know, his exposure but um then there was someone had pointed out that there was something that um uh, I 
forget. I'm trying to remember which movie it was in, but that um, anyway, that there had been some mention to him by um, gosh, I've hit a blank. Who played um, not his mentor, but um, gosh, what's her name? Remember the ancient um, one. The ancient one. Yeah. Well, the that, mm-hmm. Yeah, Tilda Swin. Um, well, she had made a comment or prophecy, maybe in one of the movies where they were having a conversation about him opening his eye and there being some type of conversation like that and which I didn't remember it but and Clea um I haven't really read comics I used to read them pretty hardcore but I didn't read a lot of strange but I do remember her being a pretty close associate to him I think think they had a lot of I think they worked together quite a bit and you know clarify that for me but um, so when when she popped up and Darren's a great actress, um, I thought, well, it would be pretty cool. Um, those two things together so makes just to see what they do with it. Yeah, traditionally in the comics, Clea, um, I think either A, she's the daughter of Dormammu or she's like the niece of Dormammu who we saw in Doctor Strange 1, right? He's kind of mm-hmm. like the main arch nemesis of Doctor Strange actually in the comics. But Strange and, and Clea, they actually, they're, they're, it's its love interest. They end up getting married at some point in the comics mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something, obviously, they deal with the uh, Christine issue, I guess, and the second one. So they're setting up the, the, the love interest for the third one. Um, have you guys talked about incursions and secret wars and all that stuff yet? Is that something that I miss no. out on? No, we haven't talked about right. that before. Well, well, here's where it's going, everyone. <laughs> so basically, in the, in the comics, actually, um, there's the Illuminati, and they were formed to stop incursions. Um, when two universes collide, which we saw that in this movie, right? We saw the Sinister Strange and we saw like him dealing with the aftermath of failing um, from stopping an incursion. And what happens is, and there's multiple Secret War story arcs, but the one that they're probably going to draw from is the most recent one where we have all these incursions happen. There's two universes left, the 616 universe, which in the comics is the main one, and the Ultimate Universe, which we had like Miles Morales and some other uh, more modern takes on characters. So what happened is those two incursions happened and there was basically Doctor Strange kind of pulled various different versions of characters into a place called Battle World. So he had like an army of Thors, multiple Spider-Men, all these different things. They were all kind of fighting for basically in the comics, the ability to reboot the universe. But it's a really cool multi-universe storyline. It's, it's like it's like the, it's, it is the end game that we're kind of building towards here. Mm-hmm. And the Russo brothers have said multiple times, the directors of uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War and, and Avengers three and four, they said, Hey, we will come back for one thing, which is Secret Wars, because that was the comic that got us in the comics, like you know, back in the day. That was the big splash you know, that, that gave us inspiration, for these big moments. And so I've been saying it for like two and a half years, like two or three years now. I've been like, we're going <laughs> secret wars, it's coming, coming, it's secret wars. And then now we got the Illuminati. And so I hundred percent guarantee that's where we're heading. And it wouldn't surprise me that after we get Black Panther Wakanda Forever which I'm pretty sure will have Namor in it. Um, it could have Doctor Strange, like multiple kings kind of fighting for multiple different lands. I bet after that movie, the Doctor Strange will show up to whoever's the new um, head of Wakanda, which we don't know yet, of course. Mm. And it'll be like, hey, we should start a group called the Illuminati. And uh, Illuminati. And uh, that will just stop the incursions. And that will kind of give us to the path to Secret Wars. Mm. And then we'll watch Secret Wars, then my head will explode in the theater, and then I will have completed everything I needed to do in my life. So that's kind of what will happen. Yeah. So now I'm wondering if um, the next two animated Spider Man films could lead into this as well, or potentially be what leads Miles Morales into the live action MCU. I see that's that part. Yes. The first part, Sony has a stick up their ass. They think they do. They think yeah. everything they do is just themselves. And then when they, when they do do something by themselves, it don't really pan out a lot Morbius. <laughs> um, but I think that it's definitely an in canon reason for the universes. I don't think Marvel or Sony will ever reference those movies and vice versa. I think Sony may reference the MCU, but the MCU won't reference the into the spider verse. No. Hmm. Interesting. Unless they can play nice. We never know. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Anything's possible. Sure. It's the multiverse. Sure. Yeah. We just need uh, Jeremy Wright to show up as the watcher and be like, look, 
I would love it. I'm just going to butt in and we're going to make all this work. <laughs> I want Jeremy Wright as the watcher live action in the MCU. I yes. want it so bad. Yeah, Same. 100%. Same. As long as those things still make a lot of money, though, Sony's going to hang on for dear life. I mean, they oh, 100%. That, yeah. that deal has, um, I mean, and Sony needs it. <laughs> That's another thing, too. I mean, they, it's, they're not, they haven't been in the best financial shape for a while. So something like right. that really gives them, uh, I don't know. I think they're desperate to hold on to it. that deal that they did with the, with the Spider Man movies in the MCU. I never would have thought that would happen, though. So, yeah. um, you know, who knows? Maybe they can see there is a lot more money to be made if we also maybe lend this here and lend this there. I, I, I don't know. It's a weird thing, though. It is, but I, I totally see just, I mean, it's kind of a weird situation because they've made so much money with No Way Home and even Venom 1, they did really, really well financially. And 2 wasn't bad either considering the pandemic. But the big thing there um, is, you're right, Sony is kind of bleeding a little bit as a, as a company mm-hmm. whole, as whole. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're just ho- holding on for dear life just to get their stocks up so they can sell the movie division. And if that happens, Disney's going to pounce. And then again, my head's going to explode and we'll be <laughs> done. We'll be right with the universe again. So, you know, give me Venom in the MCU, but like properly. You know? Properly, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, this is great. This is so much fun. Um, so we've kind of hit in our hour mark. So, I mean, just, if anyone has any last thoughts to share around. Well, I've got to ask everyone. I've got to ask go. this question. Yeah. How did you it. guys feel about his arc in this movie? Because like, again, I love, I love Raimi isms. I love Bruce Campbell. I love the visuals, all the cool stuff. But like, I felt like this is the big sticky point that me and Daniel had was that at the end of it, what did Dr. Strange learn? I mean, like he keeps getting, he keeps getting asked, what are you happy? What makes you happy? He ends up getting like a, a kind of a loose ended response from Wong at the end of like, oh, you know, it, who cares as long as we have each other. And it's like we didn't really end Doctor Strange somewhere different, I felt like, than when we started, which is kind of a big problem. So I'd like to hear from everybody. Did you guys feel like he learned anything or like did this movie justify him like this existence for like a Doctor Strange story? I mean, I don't know. I think you're right that it's it, that's probably one of the, the problems with the script and something Luke said earlier is that this really is more Wanda's movie and I think that's probably true and that's that, yeah again as, as there's more and more characters it's something they're going to probably struggle with yeah it's, I know that I can see how they've tried to really set it up and they kept on are you happy are you happy at the beginning and uh, yeah it doesn't really come to a satisfying conclusion and I think in maybe that final moment where he like he's like skipping out the door he's like maybe he's supposed to be like oh he's happy now and then he of course has something horrifying happen as he's crossing the street but um but yeah i agree with you i think it's one of the weaker points wouldn't have been incredible if he like walked into a dressing shop and come out and his collar was popped he started like dancing like toby thing. did in yeah. spider-man 3 <laughs> that would, be that would have been incredible <laughs> that would have been incredible yeah I, is i'm sorry go no go for it go ahead okay as far as his arc um yeah i'm with you that i thought the um are you happy was a pretty interesting uh you know it was an interesting question for that character, especially. And it just seemed like everything that he encountered would make that question even, you know, make it even a bigger question. And then they just sort of, like you said, he just sort of walked out and he was just like, all right. And, and they don't really give us a firm answer to that. They don't really take us to a place where we can even really figure out an answer for ourselves. It's just, it was just a question that was kind of asked and, then now he's ready kind of what i was saying earlier now we're ready for the next thing so instead of really yeah. taking him on a particular uh, journey of discovery or anything like that or moving him from point a to point b in terms of his character arc um they're just sort of looking forward what's next for the mcu and um but i will say this i'm actually i actually came into this movie a little frustrated with where his character was because I wasn't a big fan of what they did with him in No Way Home um, because I, I know that wasn't it wasn't his movie so to be fair I don't want to criticize it too much there but you know here we have a guy who could you know look through all infinite futures look through every possibility and find the one that could beat Thanos but then he can go in and do a little spell with Peter and not see you know, maybe there's a chance if I do this and he gets in here and gets in the way that I could, 
basically shatter the multiverse and open them up and cause all of this. And then he gets locked into the um, the mirror the mirror world, which he should be, you know, controlling. He should be the guy there mm-hmm. by a geometry problem. And he has to be. Wasn't it? What he had? Didn't he have to be let out by Ned or something? It was just a. It was yeah. just a weird way they handled him in that movie. So in this one, I did feel like he was more. He was kind of back to Doctor Strange. But you know, it's a great point though. By the end, he's is he any place different than he was at the beginning? I mean, I I think we're supposed to feel that way. I just don't think they really did much to show it, if that makes sense. Yeah. There's a little nugget you had in there that I think is really fascinating, and that is there's that question of he's the, he's a guy who has seen 14 million different possibilities. And my favorite mo- moment, like Doctor Strange moment, probably in the whole movie was when he was sitting in the in the chapel watching Christine getting married and his old doctor friend said basically asked him like either it was his uh, husband or friend or brother or something and he was like hey is this, this was this the only option that could have happened like I lost somebody because of the choice that you made mm-hmm. and like he said it in, in, in an amazing fashion like that was the only option that was incredible like that mm-hmm. right there yeah. was a movie and I love that part. Like, I think those first 20 minutes was fantastic. But, yeah. but yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. For me, I really, really like the what if Dr. Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. It's great. That episode, episode is so emotionally impactful. And I thought it was so well for Dr. Strange. I would have loved to see more of that brought in. Just having that pain and agony he was going through over his love like that's what made him happy and there's a lot they could have done there that's for me but even like i I gotta bring this up because you know i think i think the other thing that that was kind of sprinkled in there was like was it not the events in loki that actually caused the core multiverse issue I've wondered that. It seems like Loki and Sylvia are the ones who have actually broke the multiverse and they have not addressed that. I mean, granted yeah. they're in a pocket dimension or something, so they might not know that that's what's happened, but I keep expecting there to be some sort of tie-in with Loki and the TVA in these movies and there hasn't been at all. Yeah, Sorry, right. it's almost like they're waiting on Loki season two and but nothing really else but you would think there'd be mm-hmm. we would definitely have some type of connection at some point because that was a pretty big ending there correct me if i'm wrong but it, so originally without the pandemic dr strange 2 would have come out before spider-man no way home is that true yeah i believe that that's true and so in that case maybe loki and multiverse here would have been more tied together because i know they had to do a lot of reshoots on spider-man no way home and so it's almost like oh we would have had a multiverse situation ready for spider-man but because of the pandemic and this having to move around it's like oh we have to make up this spell situation that as keith is saying doesn't always make the most sense mm-hmm. uh and so you can see how circumstances outside of their control kind of maybe cause some of this but but yeah i agree it's been a bit clunky from from project to project it yeah, was Michael. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. As I was saying, Michael Waldron, the writer of Doctor Strange, yeah. he wrote Loki. He wrote season one of Loki, and mm-hmm. um, and yes, you're right. It's supposed to come out beforehand. Actually, America Chavez was supposed to be the Doctor Strange character in No Way Home, but they ended up getting oh, wow. flipped to Doctor mm-hmm. Strange. Mm-hmm. There's concept art of her opening up a star portal in in Manhattan with Spider Man, um, but yeah, it's interesting. Um, I don't. Kevin Feige has come out and personally said that it's the events of Loki that's done this. But it's kind of weak whenever we have to infer from the showrunner, essentially, yeah. that this is what's happening. They, they really need to, and they will, they need to tie yeah. these things kind of together and give us some, some points of contact, you know. And season and, of Loki does start shooting the first week of June. Yeah, you're right. And to their, in, in their defense, too, in the first, I guess you could say, from Iron Man to Endgame, um, what they were building towards wasn't as complex and layered and um, as probably as difficult to rein in and bring together as what they're trying to do now. So, um, you know, it was, it worked really well, but this, it does seem like they're trying to do something um, even more audacious and, and bold with this and hopefully they can pull it together. But, um, you know, so in their defense there, I mean, I think we, you um, Again, not to beat a dead horse, but we are, they're in that, you know, just wait, 
wait for what comes next mode. So um, I think it almost demands a patience to kind of see where all these pieces fit and, and all of that. Johnny Brandon, does Doctor Strange have an arc in this movie? No. <laughs> Thank no. you. Right. Um, no, I, I uh, you know, Donovan, I was, I was telling them whenever we started that, you know, Luke didn't have a great experience because he had people talking in the theater. And of course, yeah. you know, we had the two yeah. people sitting next to us. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have to go see it again. I really do. There, there was a lot going on. And, and, um, and uh, yeah, I, I just got to go see it again. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Then I can say, yes, I think he maybe he did have a, yeah. you know. Also, everyone, if you didn't know, if you watch a movie with John or Johnny Brandon, it's guaranteed <laughs> that there's going to be like a, a less than 10 year old child or adult, really. <laughs> that's just going to be either throwing popcorn, making obscene. Noise. It's like a, Johnny has a gift to, to absorb these people <laughs> next to him in the movie experience i don't know how what it is but it's incredible so i don't know what the, the way People's superpower my patience that's your, that's your superpower johnny <laughs> it is you, it, you take my... it from the other theater so the other people can have great movie experiences it's so gonna that's... turn me into a super villain if I want to solve it, <laughs> so hey if i was a few seats down the row i was on i probably would have pulled that move where i would just turn around and just stared at the people the whole time like if y'all are going to talk i'm just gonna sit here and listen to you <laughs> carrie and i shushed them so she she gave him just real. like just like this <laughs> death stare, and as soon as she did that, I looked right at him and I just shh. Then <laughs> they got quiet and everybody heard it, and so oh. it, and it was like towards the end of the film, but and they were just giggling through the whole thing. And now, no joke. Okay, so so whenever Dead Strange was popping up and he was kind of leaning, you know, and talking, it was kind of funny, and uh, so the kids were kind of cackling at that. And I got a little tickled and I thought, well, it is kind of funny. And um, because it's just like these really weird shots of dead it looked like Dead Strange just kind of like doing GQ, you know, sitting there, you know, like a weekend at Bernie's situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was just it was I, I you know, then but the kids just went and stopped. And then by that time, I think it was whenever the Wandas were having that moment. And I was like, come on, you know. So we finally had it and had to shush those kids. <laughs> Kicking at, and, but you know i'm getting wittier with my facebook comments about you know how to handle people in movie theaters so that's always that always helps yeah mm. yeah there's a tiny baby arc for dr strange <laughs> it's not much of one but it's there because the whole movie is about him learning how to let go that's uh christine keeps saying that he always has to be holding the knife so that's a thing about control and of course mm -hmm. his temptation in the multiverse is that he wants there to be a happy ending for him and christine mm -hmm. but there's not and he eventually has to accept that there's no way that he's going to be able to make that happen and then in the end credits he's rewarded with having charlie's there and show up for him mm -hmm. so again it's not much of an arc but it's kind of there it's right. there <laughs> It it's important, but it's there. You basically, pulled a 500 days of summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's moving from summer to autumn. Yeah. That's right. That was a great question, Donovan. Thank you, Luke. You're welcome. <laughs> well, any other thoughts? Well, Bruce Campbell. Bruce That's Campbell? It. Yeah. Pizza yeah. Papa. I mean, Ooh. Speaking That's my of, thought. I found someone, someone on TikTok figured out like a recipe for those little pizza balls. So I'm gonna have to try to make. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> that sounds so good. Right? Did you guys know about it. his his original role in the movie? Have you guys talked about that yet? No, we no, haven't. I didn't know that. Okay, so originally before the reshoots happened last summer, which added uh, Mr. Fantastic, John Krasinski, and added um, Aaron holt i can't think of his name the guy who played in humans i can't think of his name at all is it anson mount is that his anson name that's mount. it anson mount i don't know what i just said but that's correct so <laughs> originally instead of mr fantastic on the far left it's going to be balder the brave which is thor's brother mm -hmm. um so that's it, it played by bruce campbell but oh, they yeah. next it and that partly because i'm sure because of all the the hype that one division created and they end up adding mr fantastic and they, they changed a lot of other things too but he was originally Balder the Brave. So fun facts for you. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to get in. To, I'm hoping that we'll release like, or at least John will release like early conversations because I want to know like how early did they start talking with him about being Mr. Fantastic and how much of like just the, you know, fan hype pushed him to want to do it. 
you know, because this was such a big request from fans. You guys may have already asked this. Do you guys think he's going to be Mr. Fantastic in 616 universe? I assume, I'm assuming yes. And, and I very much hope so. I think it is really good casting. I feel like he won't be personally. I, I don't yeah, think he will be. I, I, that's the question. No idea. Yeah. There is, well, and again, see this, <laughs> this is the thing I'm like pushing myself to avoid, but I still get sucked in. But I heard this like awesome fan theory related to Fantastic Four. Um, Related Tom Cruise. to not Tom Cruise now, <laughs> no, but it, it was the, the line at, that hey, Tom Cruise. I want Tom Cruise in this fucking universe, yeah. this Iron Man. <laughs> just like, just I want to say it loudly, right? Okay, but it's essentially from Strange's comment of like, hey, didn't you peak in the 60s? Mm-hmm. And they're kind of like comparing, period piece. yeah, like they could be doing that, but there's some theories around, um, that yeah, it's in the 60s, but they get into the quantum verse. And so potentially like the next Ant-Man film is what's going to release them. So because when you're in the quantum verse, you don't really age. And so that may be how they get their abilities and they stay young. And I didn't catch that line. That's interesting because there was rumors years ago that one that, that was the pitch for the movie was that they were in the 50s or 60s. Mm-hmm. And they exa- exactly just said that that's been a rumor for like a couple yeah. of years now. Mm-hmm. I did not catch that line. That's fascinating. That's probably what's going to happen now. So possibly. And I, I bet Peyton Reed could direct it because he was he's been foaming at the mouth to direct fantastic four yeah and he's doing quantum mania so he probably who knows i think he could hop like off a, that one and go back, right in the fantastic back door four yeah fantastic four film 100 percent. yeah it's possible but isn't it also a big rumor that uh the reed richards is who bought avengers tower and that's who mm-hmm. they've been hitting at throughout yeah. all of these tv shows yep yeah, it has been i'd love it do it <laughs> Give it to me. He can be from the 60s and also be now and by the building. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. Time travel. No big deal. Time not, travel. For Mr. Yeah. not for the smartest man in the universe. Right. It's almost got to be something like that because after everything that's happened in our MCU world, for Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four to exist, for them to just sit those things out, it's kind of hard to believe. So, yeah, is it time travel? Is it, you know, how exactly are they going to bring them into the fray? Here's the biggest misstep this movie did, everyone. They didn't bring Michael Chiklis back as the thing. thing. That's the biggest right. misstep. Can you imagine? I would, yeah, that would have been fucking incredible. That would have been awesome. Instead of the uh, like Ultron Iron oh, man, having the thing God, dang, escort you to the Illuminati. So cool. What? That's the thing, though. The Ultron bots are there. So I, me and Daniel thought about this. Daniel had this idea that well, maybe since the Illuminati all got wiped out that there's a Tony Stark in that universe. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to go find whoever broke into my universe. And it could be Superior Iron Man, a.k.a. Tom Cruise. So it could be. Or, yeah. or it's Reed that built them. Reed created Ultron. Don't do that. Dude. I'm going Don't to do crush that. my dreams. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's I'm standing okay. by my theory that there's going to be an in-universe Avengers movie where Tom Cruise is playing Tony Stark. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have... like go into the movies and be like, "This is a piece of crap," or something like that. It's it's going to. Ha- oh, you think so? I mean, it's possible. John well, Stamos like, is going to be Winter Soldier. That would be kind of incredible, <laughs> honestly. Amazing. That'd be incredible. There's rumors, not rumors, but there's been like there were talks with the writers or whoever in the last day or so that they that Tom Cruise wasn't just not in discussions, but like it was more of a scheduling issue. It wasn't yeah. really, you know, like it's yeah, it's uh it's gonna happen, everyone. It it's may gonna happen. happen. It may happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Too much, too much fire, too much smoke, everyone. <laughs> Love and smoke. <laughs> well, tune in next time when we talk about Love and Thunder. I'm in. Okay, I'll, I'm I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll show up on time next time. I promise. <laughs> I'm protesting the whole movie if Loki's not in it. Am I the only one that might be a little worried about Love and Thunder? I'm st- not trying to be the I, curmudgeon. I, no, you're good. You're good. I'm yeah. excited. I, why Why are you worried about it? I would love yeah. to know, honestly. Sure. Like, um, me. It It kind of feels like we're doing Thor going to find himself all over again. You know, the first, if I remember right, when he first, you know, the first Thor movie I loved, I mean, it was this great mix of sort of, you know, sort of, you know, fish out of water humor and, and, you know, sort of the mythology and superhero, all that stuff. Um, But, you know, if I remember right, wasn't he cast out deemed unworthy because of his arrogance and he had Mm -hmm. to go out and kind of find himself and, 
realized who he was and then, you know, he found himself to be worthy again and he was going to lead, um, you know, Asgardians. And I think it was, was it Imdahl told him that Asgard is not a place, it's a people. And he had sort of swore to protect him. And now he's sort of handed it off and he's going out to find himself again and live it up and not be a, you know, not be a superhero until this bad thing happens. And then he's going to find himself again. I, I just, I don't know. I just hope it's not that again, but just with a different shade, you yeah, know? Yeah. I think that all makes sense. It seems like they're really holding a lot back as far as what they've showed us in the trailer. So I'm so. very curious to see so. what, what it's going to Truly. be. And, you know, even if it's just Thor 1 redone by Taika Waititi, I'm I'm in for that. So we'll see. <laughs> and with that, I'm yeah. actually going to have to jump off the call and I can't wait to hear the rest of what you'll say. But it's been fun. Thank Bye, you so much Andrew. for joining. Yeah. Let me see, Andrew. Um, yeah, I mean, it's valid fear, totally. I think that, first of all, again, what Andrew just said, Taika Waititi's at the helm. We got Jojo Rabbit. I mean, he's pretty incredible. Typically across the board on everything he touches. I had a great time with Riding Rock, even though it really wasn't the Thor that I wanted to see. I still love mm-hmm. the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Christian Bale in there. You got, you know, I'm not a huge Lady Thor fan, but, you know, I'll take it. You know, I'm sure they'll do a great job with it. It'll be interesting. But the thing I think that's interesting that, that does separate it from Thor 1 Thor versus now Thor, this Thor has literally been stripped of everything. He's lost his father, his brother, his mother, mm-hmm. his people. Um, he's lost, you know, he, you know, he lost himself there in, um, at the end of Infinity War. Yeah. So I think it, there's definitely, definitely extra dimensions and layers there that is just this guy's at rock bottom. And, um, you know, he's starting from ground zero in a much different place than he did in Thor, you know. So I, I suspect we'll get one more Thor movie after this and whatever team up movie there is. But um, I think we're I think Taika will have a trilogy when it's all said and done. Mm. And then they'll, they'll call it quits with Chris Hemsworth or he will call it quits. Yeah. And, and I love um, Taki's um, or what TT, all of his original stuff, really. I was, I, and I like Thor Ragnarok, but it felt like it, it just sort of jarred with the rest of, you know, what we had seen of Thor to that point. Oh, it's totally and, different. Yeah. And mm-hmm. same with Hulk. I mean, I was thinking, is this the same guy? And and again, I, I don't want to. This is all just speculation because clearly sure. we haven't seen it. But, you know, somebody in a movie. I can't wait to see if what Waititi does with um, a story that features Gore the God Butcher, mm-hmm. which is not a lightweight story by any stretch. Um, so I hope they're going to do you know do him justice because man that's that's a pretty that's a pretty heavy story with him and and I think we do get some images in those trailers that looks like that he's that he understands that and it looks like there's that, you know I'm concern but you know i'm anxious to see kind of where it ends up but have you read god butcher and god bomb um god which is okay well if you haven't read god bomb it's the second part of that and those two things together it is my by far my favorite thor story of all time it took some stuff and kind of gave it to him in an end game a little bit some things that happens Mm -hmm. but if they did that and that's, I mean, I, I'm a little hurt too. Cause I'm like, when I see Gore the God Butcher, I think that story and they're already kind of mixing other things in it that has nothing to do with that. But you're right. To me, that was, that was the ultimate, like tell this sprawling epic, like Lord of the Rings style kind of movie mm-hmm. here. And we're not going to get that, but I'm hoping they still do something special and different with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's a fascinating villain. Oh, he's, he's great. great. He's fantastic. Yeah. I'm ready for that. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, I think we should uh, go ahead and wrap that up. Um, this is fun. Um, again, thank you all for joining. Um, this means a lot to me, like that we could do this and well, just connect and talk film. Me. And um, I hope we can continue doing this down the road. Um, and again, all of your information will be shared. Um, you know, we can post this on all our channels and we'll share, you know, links to everything. So That's with great. that, we'll just thank uh, you very much. Appreciate it. It's great. Thank you. Good time. We will exit the multiverse.